Bibles, go with me to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Hallelujah. I, I hope you brought your, your Bible moving fingers or your phone fingers today because we're going to be moving through a lot of scripture at a rapid pace this morning. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for this word. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Also ask you to continue to continue to lift up Celise. She's getting stronger. Thank you so much for your prayers. Continue to lift her up. Hallelujah. Uh, when I left a few moments ago, I noticed she was downstairs being a big bowl of cereal. Come on. Cereal. Well, we didn't come to church, but I know she waited till her mother closed the garage and she came down. And I said, I want to say this. Maybe the baby is a child. Come on, man. Come on, man. She made it. But um, she's, uh, she's recovering uh, quickly and strong. She's getting better. Thank you so much for your prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, verse. 43. And this is Jesus speaking, and he says, Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Yeah. But I say, but I say, come out, come out. Jesus, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Mm. That ye may be the children of your father. Understand that. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you... What reward have ye? Do not even the publicans watch this the same? Hallelujah. The world does the same thing. Right, right. Mm. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do you watch this? What do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Yes. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father, if that phrase is again, your father, my God, which is in heaven, is perfect. That's mm. it. That's it. Yes, indeed. Today, for a subject, I simply want to speak from the purpose of an enemy. Purpose of what is the purpose? Of an enemy. Oh God. It's gonna be a good one today. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Purpose of an enemy. The question to me is kind of like asking, what is the purpose of a mosquito? Right. I understand right. they serve some type of a purpose, but right. it's right. just maybe it's meant to just annoy me. I don't know, but I often wonder what is the purpose of a mosquito to, right. to sting and bite and do something. And then somebody said, well, it's good food for the birds, okay, good. And then the birds do this, and then somebody do something with the birds. I, I'm too tired to trace up the chain, the food chain. But but it, 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 at just first glance, a mosquito seems to just be yes. a thing of great annoyance yes. just to make you break out with no real yes. significant purpose. But somewhere in the mind of God, yes. even a mosquito, as small and as minute as it is, serves a purpose in God's system. Right. But I don't know if any of you ever thought, what is the purpose of an enemy? What are they even here for? Outside of the, 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 the fact that they annoy me and mess up my day. And if you've never had an enemy, glory to God, hallelujah, maybe you may come out the womb yet, I don't know, but if you keep living long enough, I promise you, you will have one, two, three, four, five. Some of you in this room may have some right now, you just don't know if they're their right. secret in this, but they just can't stand you. Right. Come on, man. This, this thing of an enemy is very interesting, and, and I was asking the Lord this question, and I'm so glad that he began to bring 
light to this teaching because everyone in this room must understand how to properly handle your enemies. Come on, come on. Yep. Right, right, hallelujah. hallelujah. We know how to rebuke Satan. Right, right. But how do you deal with your human enemies? Come on, yeah. Come on. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Enemies, 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 enemies. What is the purpose of an enemy? And you would be surprised that I found out there are some benefits to having an enemy that goes beyond what you probably want to hear today, but there are some benefits that can go along with having an enemy. And I'm so glad I saw the scripture because I got so encouraged. The purpose of an enemy. And, and, and if you're really wanting to understand the, the definition of an enemy, I'm going to give the children a definition. I'm going to give some of the elderly a definition. I'm going to give you Greek scholars a definition of the word enemy so everybody can understand Come what an enemy is because everybody isn't necessarily your enemy. That's right. Come on, Pastor. That's but I want to show you biblically, glory to God, what an enemy is. I'm going to give you some definitions and I want you to write them down if you're taking notes this morning. And then we're going to run through a whole lot of scriptures real quickly. Hallelujah. But I want you to, to receive this word, glory to God. If you don't have any enemies now, go ahead and put it, put it in your archives. Get ready for later on. Right. So you can pull it out and you can get ready in advance. Say it. Mm -hmm. What actually is an enemy? Write this down, glory to God, for the young kids. It is a person who hates, oh my God, another. A person who hates another. This is for the young people. A person who simply hates another. A person, glory to God, hallelujah, who attempts or tries to harm another. Come on. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. For you Greek scholars, ethos. Ethos is, is a Greek word for this word enemy. It's spelled E C T H R O S. Ethos. And what this means here, this has to do with an enemy, but it's someone who's openly hostile. Someone who's openly hostile. My God. Wow. Hallelujah. To the point of enmity. Watch this. Continue to write this. It is an animated, watch this, animated by deep-seated hatred. Mm. It is animated by deep-seated hatred. It implies and reconcilable hostility proceeding out of personal hatred. Mm. It is what says it implies and reconcilable hostility proceeding out of personal hatred bent on inflicting harm. This is personal animosity. It's deep rooted. Mm. And this describes a person resolved to inflict harm, driven by irreconcilable, deep rooted enmity. Mm. Come on. Lastly, write this definition down. It is a person who fosters harmful designs against. A person who fosters harmful designs against or engages in antagonistic activities against another. It is basically an adversary or an opponent or a foe. Ooh. When you think of an enemy, someone who has this deep-rooted hatred to the point that they, they want to injure you, and it doesn't have to always be physically. Right, right, right. 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 That's right. A person who is an enemy, they have this desire. They want to see you fail. Right. They want to see you fall. They right. want to do anything they can, yeah. glory to God, to, to make sure that you're not happy. Right. Uh oh, somebody's going to trace your enemies real quick. God. They don't want to see you happy. They get mad when you get something new. Yeah. Yeah. It, yes, it may look like jealousy, but it's really this thing of saying it's. I don't want you to prosper in any way. I don't want any good to come nigh unto you. So an enemy, they can't stand when you buy a new dress. Right. Right. An enemy, there is this hostility that goes so deep yeah. to the place, glory to God, that even when God is blessing and moving in your life, right. they have a problem with the goodness of God right. on your life. So an enemy is someone, glory to God, that 
They don't have to physically do anything to you. It's this inward hatred and animosity that they harbor on the inside against you. Yeah. Right, my Lord. And the thing with this enemy thing is this, is that oftentimes, in a moment, I'm going to give you some more definitions as far as the nature, but, but I'll give you a sneak preview. And that is, a lot of times you can find your enemy, watch this, in this one area in nature. Normally, watch this, there, watch this, your human enemy looks like your spiritual enemy. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. right. Come on here. Yes, yes, your, your human enemy yes. has the same characteristics yes. as your spiritual yes. enemy. They practice the same. They do the same. They feel the same. The same way the devil feels about you, your human enemy yes. feels the same. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say this, everyone isn't your enemy. We gotta be very careful that okay. oftentimes we like glory to God. We'll take someone because they disagree with us and say that that is my enemy. Right, right, right. that's the right. Or because glory to God, I want to bring potato salad right. to the Thanksgiving and they didn't want me to bring my potato salad. Right. Come on. Well, they told you to bring out the pie, but now you think everybody don't like you because they wouldn't agree with you because right. maybe you have a side of you that's not a spoil or okay. maybe you can easily offend it. Nobody at the house eats potato salad right. for you. Right. It doesn't mean that someone is your enemy because they correct you in right. love. Right. Can you feel this for a moment? Right. When someone corrects you in love, it doesn't mean that they're your enemy. It means that they are for you and they want to see you do better. That's they want right. to see you grow in right. God. They want to see you mature in God. So if they bring the correction in your life, that does not mean that they are your enemy because they called you to the side and right. corrected you. So there's no need to leave the church because you might. Come on, that's exactly. I'm on it. I'm not going back there. Well, you never heard nobody here. You won't hurt your own self. But when people will get mad and say, that's my enemy because they corrected me. No, because if they didn't love you, they wouldn't take the time to say, this is a way that you're operating in that is not of God. Hallelujah. So I want to also sow this seed before I continue the teaching. You must stop creating enemies. Come on. Yeah. 
nature and their behavior from. Which is the enemy himself. Right. 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 Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So now I must be very careful when certain things happen in my life and when enemies are coming against me, when they are slandering me, when people hate me, when people, you can feel somebody can't say it, you they can say, I love you. You can tell them. If they are acting in folly, God calls you to operate out of wisdom that you should never bring yourself down to their level to be acting like them. That means they have the power and they can affect and influence you instead of you affecting and influencing them. You know how there's somebody sing a crazy text and everything in you wants to send it right back. The same thing. Because you feel like you gotta make them feel it because of what they're doing and how they're making you but if you do that, there is no room for God to be If you're acting just like your enemies, you put yourself on the same level and the same sphere of flesh, then there is no room to get a God result. We must understand this when it comes to, to our enemies and how to handle our enemies. Hallelujah. Many people struggle in the area of handling your enemies because your enemies, if you're not careful, they have the ability to direct you out of the way of God. That's it. You got to be careful of how you allow your enemies to affect you because they can easily tempt you out of truth. They can easily shift you to a, a bad attitude that isn't pleasing to God. If you're not careful, your enemies can so discourage and drain you and it can cause you to be off from God when you really need to be on point with God. Those who are normally connected to the enemy, they practice. 
Hallelujah. The same behavior patterns as the enemy himself. Let's look at John chapter 8. Come on, let's look at John chapter 8. Let's look at the nature, my God. The nature of your enemies, your human enemies. Mm. It will mimic that of your spiritual enemy. enemy. Go over to John chapter 8, verse 34. John chapter 8, verse 34. Watch what Jesus is saying here as he's speaking to some of these Jews who have believed. John 8 and 34, the Bible reads as such. Mm. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus answered them, Very, very, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, because that's what they were talking about a few moments ago. But ye seek to kill me, mm, because my word hath no place in you. Ah, you want to kill me because my word has no place in you, so my word offends you. Mm. Yeah. Verse 38, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do, catch that, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. So he's distinguishing here between two fathers. Right, right, right. I wonder which one who he's talking about. Right. They answered, watch this, and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Mm. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Uh oh. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Mm. Hit these religious people. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Now watch this. Why did ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my words. I understand now. Ye are of your father, the devil. Uh oh. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So now you see here that Jesus is bringing down this distinction. You are a murderer. You are just like your father, the devil. You take your characteristics from him because you want to kill me because I told you the truth. That is an enemy. So when you see your human enemies, they will always look like your spiritual enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. right. Well, how else does the enemy look mm -hmm. the spiritual enemy? Right, right. Glad you asked. Go to Zechariah chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Flip over Zechariah chapter 3. Come on, Bible seekers. We're going to need the word for a moment. Come on, come on, Zechariah chapter 3. Wow. We're going somewhere. Zechariah chapter 3. Purpose of your enemy. Let's look at the nature of this enemy. What else does he do? So that whenever you begin to see people around you, glory to God, you'll understand that they're acting a certain way and displaying a certain characteristic. I don't care how much they say they love God. You can know them by their fruit if they are enemy or not. Because many people will say, I go to church, and I'm this and I'm that. But if your characteristic does not line up with the word, hallelujah, who God says that he is, glory to God, then something is wrong. There's a contradiction here. Hallelujah. Now watch this. My God, my God. Look at this. I love this scripture. I love it. One of my favorites. Look at chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. Guess what? And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not, oh my God, this a brand plucked out of the fire? Why was he doing that? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and 
stood before the angel. Okay, so now Satan understands, glory to God. Okay, I know you got to judge them because they're guilty. And he's sitting there, glory to God, waiting there to accuse him. Hallelujah. Because I know that you're a God of justice. I know I'm ready for you to see the sentence be passed down on him. Because I know they have done wrong. Jerusalem is filthy before you. And by you being a God of justice, you have to deal with this. But he did not understand God's mercy. Hallelujah. And so, whenever you begin to see people that always wants to bring up your past and bring up what you've done and how dirty you are and how much you've messed up, that's a sign right there that they are, they are an enemy and they are operating just like Satan. Yes, yes, because it is not God that wants to sit there and point fingers at a king and say,
Now you're hindering your spiritual development and your spiritual growth because you don't understand that because somebody is your friend, you're allowing their spirit to affect your life. Come on, Pastor. These enemies, I know they can be very hard to deal with. Enemies can make you cry all night long if you're not careful. Particularly when they live in your house. Why? Come on, Pastor. When they're in your family and it's personal. But then there's another form of the enemy operation I've seen, and that is in relationships. Yeah, yeah. This is a good one. I've seen enemies even in relationships. Wow. Yes. If you don't believe me, there was a man in the Bible by the name of Samson. Mm -hmm. This man, Samson, matter of fact, I'll, I'll return there real quickly. It's not in Judges, actually, chapter 16. We're going to move rather quickly through this, but I want you to see this. This man by the name of Samson, who had these locks on his head. Yeah. Go all the way to the, to, to the Old Testament. Go towards the front of the book. Go to Judges chapter 16. And I'm going to quickly just give you some quick history. Hallelujah. God had anointed him and gave him supernatural strength so that he can glory God tear a lion into it. And he was, he was a threat to the Philistines again. This man by the name of Samson had these long locks upon his head because he was under a Nazarite vow. He was to, he could not partake of any wine or anything like that, nor could any razor be touched upon his head to, to shave his head. But but when he fell in love with this woman by the name of Delilah. I want to talk about enemies and relationships because sometimes we get called up and we fall in love with the enemy and don't even realize it. Because it's cute and it's pretty for those that are watching me. Or because maybe it seems to be satisfying us. And, 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 and this man by the name of Samson, he fell in love with the light. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. See, you got to be careful who you fall in oh, love man. with. Man. Let me rephrase that. You got to be careful who you fall in lust with. That's it. That's it. Right there. That's a better phrase in yeah. 2022. That's you got to be very careful because even in that, the enemy is working in in the relationship and sometimes glory to God most people miss it and you don't understand that this is a setup to bring your life to a place of destruction yeah. look at verse 4 for the sake of time watch this the Bible says and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah and the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth and by what means watch this we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver mm. I need y'all to catch that here it is, he fell in love with somebody that the enemy is hired yeah. and doesn't even know it. Right. My God, wow. hallelujah. But the only thing that they wanted to know was the secret of his strength. Yeah. Right. Oh my God. Mm. In other words, they really wanted to understand the secret of the presence of God on his life that brought this strength right. and power because they wanted to take him out and kill him because he was such a threat to the enemy himself. Right. Yeah. I want to give you a, a good relationship tip. Mm. You got to be careful of falling in love with people. Hallelujah! Watch this, women or men, it doesn't matter. Falling in love with people who want to know the secret of your strength. Watch yeah. this, who want to separate you from the presence of God for their own personal benefits. Right. You can put that in your notes. Jesus. Hallelujah! You must understand because the enemy will use certain. People to cause your life to become a snare, to be a snare to you, to cause the presence of God in your life to be hindered. And here we see this is exactly what happened. Yeah. It's amazing you find so many young men and young women whose lives are messed up and they're frustrated and angry because they fell in love with their lives. Wow. And so the, the story goes on to say, I'm going to read it real quickly. And the story goes on that, that glory to God, she wanted to know the secret of a strength. Now, me being Carl Williams, I probably would have already questioned that. Day out right. the what you want to know the secret of my strength? That's, right. Come on. That's suspect. Right. You're not asking me what I want for dinner, baby. You're asking me, <laughs> hallelujah, the, the, the most annoying thing I have in my life. You want yeah. to know about it. That lets me know. 
there is something that you want to hit your audience right. with. That's, it. that's already a sign. That's the enemy right there because you're asking weird questions. Glory to God as it pertains to my life. Yes. And so here it is. She's wanting to know the secret of his strength. Uh -huh. mm. He goes and plays with her for a few moments. He says, if you tie my hair up, if you do this and do this. And she yelled, the Philistines are upon me. And she did it about three times or so. And, and finally she said, you made a mockery of me. I, I can't I feel like such a fool. And she cried and cried day after day. And Samson finally got so tired of this. And he finally told her the truth. Whatever. And verse 19 is where I want to go. Because verse 19 broke my heart. Mm. Because when I saw this, I began to understand this is what you must be careful of when it comes to these silent enemies that come in the name of so-called love. And verse 19 says this, and she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. She rocked him to sleep in her lap. She put his he put his head right. in her lap. Yeah. Let me go ahead and have this in there for you, young man. Be careful who you allow your mind to be given away to, young man. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you can lose your head over her because she's so sweet. Right. But you must understand, God, is she of you? Right. Or is she only sent by the enemy to rob me of the glory that you placed on my life? That's it. She puts him to sleep. Shades his head. The presence of God is all over with him. And the story goes on. Basically, they plucked his eyes out. They made sport of him. On and on and on. All because he could not recognize that in this relationship, it was an enemy. Right, 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 right. What happens when the only thing you see is the pretty hair and the pretty eyes and the pretty lips or the big muscles and the cute smile or the sweet words, but you cannot see that there is an enemy behind you right. that's designed to ruin your life. And what got me in this text as well is the fact that it never said that Lila loved him. Right. But it right. said that he felt yes. in love. Yes, that's right, that's right. That will be for the relationship conference. Wow. But it's interesting how many people, because they are so blinded by their love, mm -hmm. that they cannot discern if this relationship is of the enemy right. and designed to kill the very glory of God in my life. Be very careful in that. Because the enemy lurks even in relationships, yeah. probably more so than anything yeah. else. Right. Most right. people miss That's this. Right. There are so many people right now Crying and right. weeping because they got in bad yes. relationships yes. that were of the enemy and right. not of God. Yes. Yes. Come on. Please be discerning mm -hmm. of these relationships. I want you to write this down and because I want to sow this into your spirit and into your life. Be ever discerning, watch this, ever discerning of secret enemies. Be ever Discerning of secret enemies. Just because they smile in your face, just because glory to God they laugh and come to your home, does not mean glory to God that they have your best That's interest right. at heart, nor does it mean that they love you. That's right. Be that. very aware of secret enemies. That's right. Come My God. Ask God to discern who's in your soul. Yes, Ask God to give you the discernment to know who's in your life, who's ready for you. Right. Hallelujah. I had a woman years ago tell me, uh, years ago, years ago in the ministry, she said, you know what, you seem to have changed. You seem like you're a little sterner now than when you first started out in ministry. Mm. And I didn't realize it that back in 2002, Man. I had become so hurt and affected by Man. certain people Man. in the ministry yes. that it changed my whole yes, disposition. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And you don't understand how sometimes if you're not careful, Woo. so much can take place from an enemy that he can take you out of kindness. Yes. Causing you to become sturdy and, 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 and cause you to become mean and stubborn and you don't even realize it. Right. That's real. Oh my God. I'm glad that well I told you that because I was able to take a look at myself and kind of rebound and bounce back to the place of kindness. I did not know how it crept in my life. Yeah, it may do it. It'll do it. It'll do it. It'll do it. But now here is the key. Jesus. So then, what then is 
is the purpose of the enemy. Not that we understand the nature, we understand how the enemy actually moves in certain things, but 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 help me. Help me to understand Come on here, what the purpose of the enemy is. What are some purposes that I can find and use in my life? This is what I found. I can give you many. Mm -hmm. I really want to give you a lot. It's found in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Turn there. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Come on, we're almost done. 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, watch this, and when the time was that Elkaniah offered, he gave to Panina his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions, but unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore. For to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. Uh oh. So here it is, this woman by the name of Hannah. Seems like a sweet lady. But she has this banana. Hannah's womb has been shut by the Lord. And that's bad enough. But here it is, this woman by the name of Panina, Elkanah's other wife. Right, 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 right. It's taunting her because her quiver is full. Yeah. So she has children. Mm -hmm. Hannah has none. Mm -hmm. The husband is giving her double portions, mm -hmm. but it isn't enough. Mm -hmm. This taunting is so bad that it does something to Hannah. Yeah. It causes her to weep, but it also does something else. It causes her to pray. Yeah. Yeah. It creates in her a desperation. Yeah. Right. My God. So even though this Penina is constantly taunting poor little Hannah. Yeah. Right. I always go for the other dog. Yeah. I can't stand for people to be mean. Right, right, right. It, it, it's just something about it, y'all. Yeah. I've been that way since I was like eight years old. Yeah. I get angry. I cannot stand to see people just mistreat people. Leave right. them alone. Right. I cannot stand bullies. Yeah. I, 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 that's not me. I can't, I'm telling you, I can't handle it. Right. So she's taunting this woman who already has this condition. So she is an enemy and she's poking at her, reminding her that she doesn't have children, taunting her, taunting her. But what she doesn't know, that this taunting is creating a desperation and it's causing her to go more after God and it's causing her to pray more. The taunting and the, and, and the, the distressing and, and the, the friction and the pain of what she's going through is making her pray so much. Hallelujah, that, 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 that the priest Eli sees her mulling her out and he thinks she's drunk. Yes, my God. And he begins to kind of get kind of abuse her. And she says, oh no, I'm not drunk. She says, but I'm just bitter yeah. in my spirit. I'm just going through some things. There are yeah. some things that are going on in verse 10. Yeah. The Bible says, and she was in bitterness of soul yeah. and prayed unto the Lord and she wept sore. Yeah. I'm not drunk. I'm just going through some things. I'm bitter in my soul. I'm such a weight in my soul because of this taunting. But this taunting is keeping her in the presence of God. So while the enemy thinks she's getting away with something by making her feel some kind of way. Hallelujah. She doesn't understand. This is bringing her to the place that God is about to do something in this woman's life. And Eli begins to pronounce a blessing on her. Hallelujah. And says, may God grant your petition. And she leaves out of the presence of Eli. And her countenance is lifted up. And the next day, her and her husband connect together. Right. And guess what happens? Uh -huh. The Lord remembers her. And they conceive yes. that they have a child. That's it. That's it. But they not only have a child. She births a prophet. Yes. That's right. Oh That's right. She births something that will give God glory. Y'all catch me when you get home. So even though there was a taunting from the enemy, oh, hallelujah, no. it set the stage no. for a birthing no. of something yes. that's of God. She birthed Samuel. Samuel came forth as yes. a prophet to the nation. She brought forth something that will speak for yes. her. Come on, yeah. Hallelujah. See, sometimes people don't understand Keep that when your enemy thinks they're doing what they're doing, they push you Keep and get you to think they're getting over on you. Keep they don't understand that that pushing is pushing oh. you closer to the presence yes. of God. And it's creating a deeper desperation for God. That's going to create a birthing of something that's going to be dedicated to God. That's going to shut the mouth of the enemy yeah. up. Because after this child was born, you hear nothing else about the mouth. That's right. That's right. Come on here. What is the purpose of an enemy? The enemy can 
God, there is a purpose for yes, the is. enemy. Come Number on. two, wow. it's found in Daniel chapter three. Here is my next purpose. I love this one. Mm -hmm. Just flip over just a few chapters over. Daniel chapter three. Oh, I love this. I love this. Daniel chapter three. Here is another purpose that you must understand when it comes to this enemy. Hallelujah. What is the purpose of an enemy? Daniel chapter 3. I'm going to move to this rather quickly. Some of you pretty much know it, but if you don't, i got to act like you've never heard it before. Hallelujah. King Nebuchadnezzar had erected this golden statue. And glory to God, he had all of these instruments that when you, when the instruments would play, the psaltery and the lyre and all of them, and all of the fruit. We hear all of these instruments bow down and worship this golden image. But there were three men by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men refused to bow down. So it was reported that they did not bow down. So now they have to come before King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar said, is this true? That you do not bow down whenever you hear the sound of the instruments of my golden image? Yeah. Hmm. Hallelujah. So in other words, you're not doing what everybody else in the nation is doing. You're not compromising, huh? You're going to go and keep your little standard. Let me paraphrase it, 2022. Right. So this is what's going on. This is the image that he's erected. But you need to tell me that you're not going to bow down to it. And they said, no, we're not going to bow down to it. They said, no, worship basically belongs to God. We're not going to bow down to it. Because if you did not do this, guess what happened? You could lose your life. Right, right, right. I want you to see this in Scripture because... This gets very interesting now that you see kind of what's going on here. So these men refuse to bow down. Oh so something unique happened. Mm. In verse 16. In verse 16. Wow. Mm. The Bible says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. We will not throw and follow the culture that stands against God. We are going to do, hallelujah, what God has created and called us to do. The Bible says, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. He was angry, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now watch this. I want you to catch this. In other words, his attitude towards the change. And a lot of times, that's what will happen. If people can, can see that you will not go the way that they want you to go, then oftentimes they will become an enemy. Now, he wasn't an enemy at first, but now he becomes an enemy because he knows that they won't flow in his flow or his way. But notice what happens. This is so amazing. And this is actually a true story. Watch what happens. My God, hallelujah. Look at verse, verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that they were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the fiery burning furnace. Then, watch this, these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, in their hats, and, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command commandment was, was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men mm, that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, watch this, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They asked and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men walk loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they had no hurt. Oh my God. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shep, I preach your head in me though. Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth. I'll watch this forth uh, of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, everybody basically gathered 
around them. They didn't see any smoke on them. They didn't even smell like they had gone through anything. But this is what I want you to see in verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And had says, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted him and changed the king's words and yielded their bodies that they may not serve nor worship any god except their own. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language would speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and the video shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made the dumb hill. But look at the last verse in verse 30. Verse 30, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and the in the province of Babylon. That's a whole mouthful, but I want you to catch this. What that simply means is this, is that God can even use your enemies to bring yes. you to a place of promotion. Yes, indeed. But the good news is, is yes, that indeed. if you stay faithful to God, right in the face of your enemies, hallelujah, God will cause even those that don't like you, hallelujah, to bless you. That's what the Bible says. If a man's ways pleases the Lord, he will make even his enemies live at peace right. with him. So here it is. These men were supposed to lose their lives, but they ended up getting promoted instead. Come on. Yes, indeed. Mm. Yes, indeed. What if God is using this moment with right. your enemy uh -huh. to set you up for great promotion? Right. Yes. right, right. But you fail because you allowed your enemy to affect you. That's right. Come on. Oh, God. Finally, I want to sow this into your lives. Finally, I want to sow this into your soul. Come on here. God did great miracles throughout the Bible mm -hmm. with the enemies. Yes, he did. We can't even get into Pharaoh on and on and on. Exodus oh, chapter 14. On and on. How God hardened his heart to make him yes, go out to pursue his children. To set him up for destruction. Because he was gloating and talking about how grand he was. God brought this destruction and trapped Pharaoh and all of his men in a moment. Finally, I want to sow this into your life. God can also use your enemies to reveal to you your character. Yes, indeed. Say that. Say that. God can use your enemies to show you what's really in you. God can use your enemies to put so much pressure on you. Hallelujah. That you will see stuff coming out of you. Oh my God, I didn't even know I was like that. God can use even your enemies to get you to a place of sharpening you. Glory to God, because they will require you to really trust in right. God to deal with them. That's it. Yeah. And so sometimes certain things in you, yeah. God will show you. He will even reveal to you how mature you are right. in your enemies. Right. Because when you find yourself forgiving those right. who done things to you that seem like it's unforgivable, but when you find yourself forgiving them, oh. that's a sign that you have matured in love. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. My Lord, my Lord. So sometimes God will give you a lot of enemies. It's for your shopping. It's for your development. It's for your growth. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. No, it doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't. Come on. Come on. So now in closing, we must get back to this love the enemy stuff. Because <laughs> come on here. I know this is tripping a whole lot of people up. Come on, Pastor. Uh, what does it mean when he says, love your enemy? This goosebump feeling. That's why it's hard for you to understand. This. Right. Because in your mind, you're trying to register. How am I supposed to have these goosebumps, butterflies in my stomach when I see you feeling? But I don't really like you. Right. Particularly when your conduct has been injurious towards me. Come on, Pastor. When your conduct has been evil. Help. When your conduct has been wicked. You better help somebody. When he says, love your enemies. Yeah. He isn't telling you, glory to God, hallelujah, on, to like their conduct. Right, right, right. Hallelujah. He's not telling you to approve of their injurious ways because that doesn't even make sense. Right. Someone just injured me with their mouths and I'm like, I love you, I feel goosebumps. Right, right. That's not what he's talking about. No, it's not. Come on. That's why we gotta really truly understand what God kind of love is. Right. Yes. Yes. Come on. What he's saying here, he's talking about a benevolent love. That's it. Speak well of you, yes. and I still want well for you. Right. I care about you. Right. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to slander you. As a matter of fact, I want the best for you right. to the point that I want to pray for 
you and, I, and I'm, gonna, I'm willing to put love in action yes. and be there for you when and if you need me even though your conduct is injurious yes. and ungodly yes. I don't like your conduct no I don't love that but I love you yes. I love glory God to pray for you yes. and bring you to the presence of God yes. now Paul hallelujah yes. he starts to expound on this in scripture because many people don't understand what this is. But Paul makes it very clear in Romans chapter 12. He breaks it down and shows us really what Jesus meant when he said what he said. And I'm so glad that Paul wrote this in chapter 12. Because this is one of my favorite scriptures. Watch what it says. I'm going to read it for you. Real quickly, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this and I want you to watch this. In verse 19. Hallelujah. Romans 12 and verse 19. This is what it says. Paul says this. He says this. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, yes. come on, come on. but rather give place unto wrath, watch this, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith yes. the Lord. Therefore, here it is, if thy enemy hunger, oh my God, hunger, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Oh my God. That's how you deal with your enemies. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You just talked about me yesterday, and now he's calling and saying, I have a flat tire. Glory to God. And you know you got triple A, you can help him out. Don't say good for you. I hope you, you, you stay in the rain, and I hope some of you get hit by a mat truck while you're changing. I hope something happened to you while you're out there. Just because of what you said to me yesterday. No, no, no. That's not the approach. Now, now watch this. If you feel it, you must deal with it in that moment. But the way you deal with it in that moment, hallelujah, is to think about how merciful God was to you when you did all the stuff that you did.
That's it. Yes. That's it. Saints of God. Yes. That's it. Saints of God. That's it. Don't miss the goodness of God in your life because of the toxic and poisonous That's it. That's it. That's it. You are going to face some these. Yes, indeed. As a matter of fact, Jesus said in John 15, He says, Look here. If the world hated you, don't even sweat that. That's it. He hated me first. Then he went on to say, you know what, the world would love you if you were his own, but you don't belong to the world. That's why the world hates you, because it hated me. And since you are like me and the world hates me, then the world will hate you. That's right. It's a part of this journey in life. Yeah. But you must have the wisdom to know how to handle it. And you handle it by having the Ooh. love of God That's in good. your heart yes. towards all men, to, no matter to. what. Doesn't mean you have to take them out to dinner next week. Right. That's right, Pastor. Well, here it is. But God will tell you. That's right. That's right. That's it. Could you do it? That's it. Come on. That's it. The answer is yes. Yes, indeed. When you are like the Father. Yes. You show that you are his child. Yes. Right. And when you show that you are his child, yes. you can expect an eternal reward. Yes. But you can also expect God to blow your mind Man, while you're down on good. this earth. That's and here's good. the other thing. You don't know who's watching right. how other people are treating you. And they're watching That's how you right. respond to it. Right. So that means your witness right. can be magnified when you walk in the love of God. On, so somebody else can come up to your work and say, I've been noticing how they treat you, but I'm right. watching how you treat them back. How are you? What church you go to again? Right. 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 I need to know this God that you're talking about. Because that has to really be God in you That's for it. you to walk in that kind of love. Remember this body of Christ as you go out into the world. As you go out into the world and as you ask, as you deal with your enemy and you have to fight with the enemies good, of the human kind good. that's being influenced by the spiritual kind, I want you to understand that if you do the word of God in love, yes. you will never be disappointed. That's right. Even if people think they're getting over on you, right, right, right. In the end, they will not win. See, that's why you don't have to defend yourself. Come on. You don't have to fight for yourself. Let God fight for you. Yes. You do the word of God. Yes. And watch what God will do in your life Good, right and there. blessing your life from this moment on. Stand up with you, my dear Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. More than anything, what we need in this last day is the strength and grace of God. Yes. Even as we deal with enemies of all sorts of kinds. Yes, even when we deal with enemies in our home space, yes. in our households, uh -huh. yes. wow, wow, wow. Whatever the enemy has done from the human kind, through words, through abuses, mm -hmm. rejections, uh. slander, verbal abuse with the mouth, doesn't matter. I want to say this to you. Whatever the enemy has done, it is not stronger than what God has done. Right. 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 It doesn't have more power than the word of God over your life. That's right. That's it. it doesn't have more authority That's it. than the presence of God over your life. Hmm. Yes, you will deal with enemies. Yes, indeed. It is a part of the journey. That's right. yes. oh, yeah. But while the enemy thinks He's using you. They don't know it. God is using them. Jesus. The enemy is a defeated foe. Yes, he is. And everyone who takes his side joins that category of defeated foe. God has called you to be more than a conqueror. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. When God is in you, His love is in you. Yes, and His love is stronger than any hatred yes, that you yes, could ever face. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I must say this, and I'm sure we may lose some viewers because of this. But I must say it. I watched First Lady go through in the town of Weatherford, Texas. Two jobs that she was so qualified for. Mm -hmm. And the thing that was said was, and 
She heard this through sources that I will not reveal on this line. That Parker County is not ready for a white leader. I'll black. say it like that. Black. Black. Like that. A black leader. I'll say it like that. Parker County is not ready for a black leader. Yes. I know we were still on the cover stuff. We are, we are, we are. But what really hurt me about that is that a few years prior, they woke her up in Parker County. But Parker County put in this magazine, smile with all the Christmas stuff around her. Right. <laughs> talking about how wonderful she was in Parker County. They did. How do you get in Parker County Today magazine, but they do not? <laughs> ah, come on, Come on, here. Black leader. Come on. Come on. Not one organization, but two organizations. Right. One organization allowed her to go through the whole process and God started counseling out all the people they were trying to put in front of her yeah. to where it was only her. Yeah. Right. Then they had to shed it down and say, well, she doesn't have this. Why did you let her go through the interview process? Right, right, right. I have to say this because this Come is on, your, and I know I have some listeners and relevant and if you tune this out, God bless you, right. it's going to be your loss. Yeah. But I have to be bold and speak out That's it. it. I, I'm not going to be afraid of it. That's right. I can't be afraid of it. Come on. That is a, that is a race of hatred yes, that we shouldn't even be operating in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And these are the same people that loved her, ah. that honored her, and put their arms around her, but yet secretly were enemies yeah. when it came to her well-being. But God turned the tables, yeah. sent her to a job that gave exactly what she wanted at the other place. Come on. And put her in a better position. Come on, your pastor. I'll say that. I'll right say all of that. Much better for me. Because there are so many types of enemies yeah. and humans that we have to face. Oh. And it's so hurtful. Yes, yes. But here is the thing that I must give her credit for. She took it with a smile. Yeah. Yeah. Every day. Every day. She on. took it with love. Now, this is what you must do in this room. Thank you, Lord. Amazing. Even in your households, in your families, in your lives, as you encounter your enemies, remember this. I am a child of God. And I will love all men. Yeah, come on. I will pray for them. Even if they can't stand me or hate me, I will even if you don't speak to me, I'm going to speak to you. Let me tell you right now. I love black, white, Asian, Hispanic, polka dot. It doesn't really matter. They all are around. I, I love people and I see people for people. I got Uncle Danny here. I call him Uncle Danny, but he's my uncle. Yeah, I, got, I love all people. Yeah. I love all people because God lives in me. I can't yeah. but to love all men. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there are some people, now watch this. This is not even a white and black thing because to be honest with you, there are some black people that have done me pretty well. Right. right. Glory to God. We can go down the whole list of things. Okay. Come on. So to me, it's not about color. It's about character. Right, right. That's it. That's right. It's about character. That's it. We as a body of believers, let's walk in the love of God. And if you're not filled with the love of God, ask God to fill you with his love. Yeah. And even when people do things to you personally, mm -hmm. hallelujah, learn not to allow them to affect you personally. Right. Yeah. But take it to the presence of God. Ask yeah. God to give you strength so that you can continue to be a witness for God. Yes. Yeah. That's what it's all about, saints. Yes, indeed. Now, in this room, we're praying as we go into this moment. I don't, even, I don't even know now if after this word, the whole idea is going to just pop up. But whatever the case is, we're going to be ready. Yeah. But right now, for those who are in your life and in your space, if there are enemies that you know that you have, even right now, forgive them, let it go. Don't mistreat them because they mistreat you. Right, right, right. Keep walking in the love of God. And let God fill your heart with yes, peace. That's it. I'm praying for strength because yes. more than anything, body of Christ, we are really missing yes. in this area of love. Right, 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 we've got right. a lot of work to do. Yeah, it's yeah. right. It still oh, isn't where it needs to be. Yeah. You're right, you're right. I mean, we're working on it really hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's not where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And that's because we're trying to fabricate it out of our own strength. Right, that's it. Instead of letting the Holy Spirit God, produce God, it in us. That's it. When God produces that love in us, it'll be easy, glory to God, to love. 
Hallelujah. Home your brothers and sisters. And even the enemies who are out in the world. May God bless you and keep you as my prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word today. We want yes. this word, God, to go into the crevices of our hearts and our souls oh, today. Yes, we want this word to get down deep in our spirit. We want this word, Father God, to penetrate every part of our heart so that we can walk out in truth. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We want to be able to walk in your love. So strengthen us, God. Yes, Lord. Strengthen us to love to the point that our hearts and lives are turned around. Strengthen us to the point, God, that we can love our enemies. To the place that we can love them out of what they were in, God. Yes. And love them into your kingdom, God. Yes, Lord. No matter what color they are, no matter glory they have, what background they come from, Lord. No matter what they're struggling with, give us the ability to love them, God. Yes. Hallelujah. And if there's anything that's still festering in our hearts from things that the enemies have done in the past, Lord, God, cleanse that out of our souls, God. We forgive them. We release it. And let it go out of our spirit today. In the name of Jesus, clear out our soul, God. Let there be nothing but your love and the imprint of your word on our lives, God, so that we can love as you have called us to love. We honor you and we praise you, God. And we thank you, God. Let the whole of of worship be the body of believers who are filled with your love, God. And who will not stumble over the weaknesses of our enemies, God. Who will not stumble over the flaws of human flesh, God. But will triumph, God, because we will walk in your love. We thank you and we bless you and we honor you today. That this is a blessed house, God. Bless your people, God. Bless each and every one of us, God. Bless us, God, that we may shine bright for you in these last days. We love you and we thank you and ask these blessings.